Great show, you guys. Thank you so much. Yay. Thank you. Very cool. Yay. That was fun. Amazing. I great. say we go with there's no place like 127.0.0.1 <laughs> as our. I think that's cool. Our yes. title. Yes. It's a generational thing. I think. I like it. I love it. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to log off. All right, man. Thanks again. That was brilliant. Re Thank great you. art. Yes. Thank you so much. It was so good. <laughs> Thank you. It was. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing it. It was really great meeting you, Richard, and good seeing you again, Andrew. Good to see you too, Lynn. All right. Take care. Goodbye. Every, Tinvec and T2T2 both pointing out IPv6 would be much shorter, just colon, colon, one. <laughs> Duh. No, obviously. Mm. I, can't, I have to get a new shirt that says there's uh. no place like colon, colon, one. So I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but while the show has been proceeding, the sun has been going down and is now directly beating on me <laughs> through the windows. And of course, my air conditioning is off because oh, it's well, go turn loud. it on. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to turn that on real quick. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I totally agree with you, um, Drew, about the uh, the whole e card thing. It would never fly in the U.S. We, uh, we can't even ask for driver's licenses to vote. <laughs> no, it's th there. There is an embedded fear of anyone, whether it's a company or a government agency, just having all the info details on you. Right. Even I, though people will give it away without thinking about it. Like if right. You there's the irony. No, oh, I don't want that to happen. Yep. You know that, and and you're right. I guess it's the idea when you get rid of choice. You know, I'm a person that that I, I don't do everything through Google. I don't do everything through Facebook, and and I I love Apple products because their business model is based upon the idea of we don't want to know these things. Um, you know, and and of course the thing is is that you know if an ad company wants to track you, you can use Tor, you can use anything you want. They're going to figure out from your fingerprint of the websites you go to and the order you do them. There's so many ways to circumvent that. But, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I like the idea of just I, I believe that having a perpetual skepticism of too much power is a healthy thing. It's, it's also yeah. my firm belief why cash, physical cash, will never go away. Yeah, I agree. Nate, but it's it's you saw you know what the Justice Department was doing, you know, cracking down on porn stars and other people, and kind of going after sort of like what they considered sort of blue violations and stuff, and getting banks to stop, you know, dealing with that. Which is that's the scary sort of side of that is that you can, yeah. you know, you can use this to go after things that aren't necessarily wrong, but you can, you know. Well, ca cash could very easily go away if the government just decides to well, stop printing it yeah, and say we'll only back digital currency, which I think could absolutely happen. Well, it could, it could happen, but I don't think you could do it without uh, an uproar. I don't disagree. know. I mean, there'll be an uproar, but I don't know if it's enough, enough of an uproar anymore to stop it because most people don't like, I mean, there's, I guess the difference is, I don't know anybody who says, I like IDs. Like, it's very rare for someone <laughs> to say that. I know lots of perfectly rational people who say, I don't want cash. I don't want to carry cash. I, you know what? I, but see, that's anecdotal. I don't, I don't well, think that's all. Yeah, I mean, that's all we've got to go on. It's all anecdotal. Well, I'm just saying, my sense is that IDs is the kind of thing where the prevailing opinion is very skeptical. Cash is not. There are p plenty of people who are skeptical about not having cash, but there's just as many people out there who are fine with not having cash. And I think yeah. that's. I think there's a different landscape between the two. But or I change mean, your Ted Cruz. How would you handle? I mean, <laughs> you know, I I don't know. I don't I don't believe that. I think I think if there was if if people, and this is the thing, if you ask people that question, it's just, it's strictly academic. Right until it's actually down the pipe, that that it's chugging toward that, toward that. Well, the one the one thing I would say in your favor is that we can't get rid of pennies, and if we can't get rid of pennies, we probably can't get rid of cash. I just remember back in the late eighties, uh, uh, early nineties, there was there was a huge thing about cable rates going up. Amongst other things that people could write into their congressman about, that was the one thing that got a huge portion. Of the sure, US I'm, I mean, it's, there you could. Yes, I don't know that that sheds any light on whether well, we no, like but cash I'm or not. What I'm saying is that when things come down that directly affect people, 
I think you'll get a you'll get a truer sense. I'm, of I'm what not I'm, I'm not de- I'm not debating that. My I'm just saying that I think this is one of those things that won't get enough people upset about it. Uh, but see, there, you it. just that you just contradicted yourself. You just I I, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I I, think. When I think about all those other, there's so many transactions that you do use cash for. Like, I go pull into a parking, you know, I go I go for park pay for parking downtown in some shady lot. I don't want to hand over my credit card to this guy. I do not want to give him my card. You know, I'm at a mom and pop restaurant or whatever, and I want to leave a tip, you know, and and have a separate transaction with the the waitress and all that. There, you know, when I get my haircut, whatever. There's so many places where I don't want to give this information over or do that. You know, I, I, yeah, and I'm not debating that there's lots of other people like you. What I'm de- debating is that that percentage divide of <laughs> you have to have a certain critical mass to be able to stop something like that. You, you Any time you make a change like that, there's going to be a huge uproar of people saying, a "Don't do it." Mass that wants to make that change, though. You're just saying how many people are crying. No, I'm actually saying no. I'm actually saying that the government has an insti- it has an interest in making that change, and they can make it. As long as they can parts of the government, but but you know we're you're you're one different you know group of congressmen or House of Representatives getting swept in who all of a sudden say no no chance in hell you know. Well, maybe yeah. I wasn't thinking about party lines. I'm thinking about institutions of government saying you know what we're going to make this change, Mm -hmm. and so then it just has to wait for the political winds to move to a point where that institution could get its way. That's why he believes in the Amero. (laughs) No, I don't believe in the Amero. I'm, and again, uh, don't confuse me arguing what I think might happen with what I want to happen. No, Tom. It's the way it works. No, you I can only ever argue for the thing that's in your heart. Yeah, no, I understand that. I, I, just, I just, I guess that I, I'm not aware of this, I, I'm not aware of this huge ban cash movement in government or outside. Well, I'm certainly aware of there's a lot of people that would fight tooth and nail to prevent that from happening. Well, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm starting with the premise that the government would like to get rid of the business of having to print cash. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong about that, but it seems to me that that would solve a lot of problems. They could track things better. They wouldn't have to, they have to do the printing infrastructure and replacing mm-hmm. bills. They've been trying to figure out how to change the metal composition of coins forever to make it cost, less costly. It would just solve so many problems. And if they get in a political position where they could say, you know what? So many people are using credit cards. So many people are using online transactions. We've got this new blockchain technology that was implemented by by the you know by the president ten years ago, uh, we think there's no reason to print cash anymore. I, there's one particularly huge reason, and that's because the U.S. dollar is a reserve currency of the planet. So, if you do that, you have a huge domino effect of political repercussions across. Yeah, but uh, the U.S. demonstrably does not care about overseas dollar deposits. It does because that's how that's most most of the, the most of our policy ignores any possible effect on the dollar oh, abroad. That is, that is so untrue. <laughs> I'll find the Economist so article that I just read about that very thing and send it to you. All right, you send me that opinion piece. Oh, I really think we should all just be... I'll attack involved. your sources instead of your logic. Well, let's, let's touch upon a thread there. Like Andrew, by the way, welcome to East meets West. That's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> on, on the idea of implementing a blockchain or something to that effect, I mean, that, that would be very curious to see if the government did adopt first some form of digital kind of currency. You know, I think that's yeah. going to be step number one, which I would be amazed... They'll you do know, it, it. I think they'll do it for financial, uh, from financial regulation, right? Mm-hmm. And that because that's where it's getting fintech is where it's getting the most pickup. So it won't be like the consumer would use it, but it would take care of a, a of a lot of record keeping with it, like Agreed. things like the SEC and yeah. Stuff like I, I, mean, that. I mean, that I mean, first we're gonna have to get to there, which I think at some point, you know, you're gonna have that, and that's gonna be, you know, you looked at sort of the. With Bitcoin, sort of the people that sort of jumped all over it early on, um, you know, because they saw opportunity, and the other people that were keeping a cautious eye on this, saying, "Okay, this is going to go somewhere. This thing right now is probably not that final form, but this is going to go somewhere." And you know, what are you know the economists who work for Google thinking, and what are these other people thinking as far as you know that that that's where it gets kind of curious to me. 
Yeah, and I and I think uh, a a fair a fair thing to say in response to my premise is sure, Tom, but it's not going to happen soon, and I think that's probably true. This, we're not going to get rid of cash anytime soon. In a long enough timeline, cash will be around when she's old enough to spend it. No, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> she really needs to be what? I know. I just I just realized, like, actually, that's not that far off. She'll be able to spend it pretty soon. It's like a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I, I, I do get, I do get very cautious about saying things like "cash will never go away" because it does strike me as one of those things that old people said that turned out not to be true because well, they. I mean, there will be a time where U.S. currency, the current U.S. currency we have, will be worthless. But I still think there will be a physical medium that is like cash that will still exist. If I don't know about that. I, I th- here's here's what I actually. Whoa. Why are you doing it? Yes, hi. I'd like to place an order for download. <laughs> we got to pay cash for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys couldn't hear that, but uh, yesterday's no, episode started to play in my head. Yeah, we, we heard that. No, you heard, you heard something happen. Oh, but there was also something else happening on top of it. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Weird. So what do you think is going to happen, Tom? I think I'm going to focus on publishing the show. No, uh. I, I think what's going to happen is, uh, is that currency governments will have uh, an, a motivation to make currencies virtual. Uh, enough people will like the convenience of that, that it will be allowed, and that a new sort of hard currency will replace it for those people that Roger's talking about, that won't necessarily be government issued, but there there will be some kind of other hard currency. And I, you know, the easy one is like, so it'll go back to the gold standard. And I don't know that it would it would go back to gold it's particularly. About like there will be a physical medium. Of, it's but not government issued. It will be, you know. You're shifting your. You were saying that the government would never get no, a currency. No, it will have to be government issued. No, it won't. Well, you had, you know, prior to a national currency, an individual states have their own currencies. And, you know, we can, you know, start getting into what, how we define a currency or whatever, but it's some sort of anonymous form of physical media that is, has value that is backed by, you know, either a government institution. The reason why it would, well, okay, it would need to be issued, but it would need to be officially recognized as a... No, no because the people who will want to use it won't want the government tracking it. So it will actually be more likely that it would they wouldn't want the government to have anything to do with it. They, well, then that's called barter. That's what people do already. No, you can you can have non-governmental currencies that are used to as an intermediary from well, barter. No, but I think the, the the thing is with currency, if it's it's knowledge by the the government, you have to take it as a form of payment unless if someone says right. Hey, and so what I'm saying is the government what, says uh, you have to take this virtual currency as a form of payment now, but people who don't want to deal in that system figure out their own hard currency that's untrackable. By the way, that's a misconception as far as you having to take it. And when they say it's legal tender for all debts, public and private, it used to mean because there are different kinds of currencies that could be used purely for private debts or for public. And it, it actually sort of means the inverse. If you walk in and say, I've got, you have to take all these dollar bills or these pennies, they do not. It yeah. just means that you were, you was not illegal to use it for different transactions. I actually found that out when I tried to pay my rent in cash in Arlington, Virginia one time. And they're like, nope, you're writing us a check. We well, don't take about, cash. What about government institutions like the IRS? Would they have to accept it? Cause there's nope. that, no. Well, I mean, it'd be kind of stupid that? for them not to, well, but no, I guess they wouldn't that have to. Story about that guy who paid his tax bill with like, he went to the bank and got like a bunch of quarters or pennies and the court ruled that the IRS had to take it. Yeah, I don't know what the, the, the follow-up on that ruling was, but the, the intent of the law was to allow you to use this currency for, for different kinds of paying different kinds of debts where, you know, previously you might have certain kinds of, you know, individual bank promissory notes or et cetera. But uh, I, I'm aware of, I've heard of that. I don't know what, the, you know, if that was eventually, because I've heard of other cases where they've said, no, you have, people try to pay parking fines and things like that. And they've said, it, you know, the discretion of a judge to say how they interpret it, but the intent was. Quatlas, gentlemen. 
quatlus. I bet 50 quatlus that hard quatlus will be outlawed. Do you think that if... I don't know if they'll be outlawed. Do, do you think that if we got rid of official U.S. currency and went to something that was virtual, there wouldn't become an underground market use for the remaining currency? That's a good question. Like, when it's no longer backed by the full faith and credit of the United States government, would it still be useful? Because it's hard to counterfeit? And, be, it, and, and it's, it, it is virtually, not necessarily entirely, but virtually untraceable. It is, it is that thing that they might try and set up on their own. Mm -hmm. So does it then suddenly have some new value because it's actually not supposed to be used? That could be. That could but happen. You're, but you get into a valuation question because, you know, if what makes $20, $20 is X number of purchasing power, but once it's you through inflation or whatever it causes, you know, thing, it has its, you know, we could, you know, there are a lot of, you know, Deutschmarks from the Weimar Republic out there that you could certainly, you know, mm -hmm. use or Zaire dollars or whatever, but... Uh, you know, I guess if you're saying based upon an element of scarcity, like we, you know, use useless things like diamonds or other sorts of materials. Um, diamonds, diamonds, diamonds. Are one of the most worthless items. Oh, I mean, compared to industrial. I mean, if you're, if you're outside looking for... That's right, it's like outside of an, an industrial use. But have. they're forever. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like the man-made <laughs> diamonds are much better for industrial applications than the ones that we're pulling out of the diamond mines. Which, which is, I mean, the, all values on that are totally arbitrary. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Well, and, and that's true. Of, I think what's intriguing about what uh, Richard suggested is if nobody's making $20 bills anymore and $20 bills are, are very hard to counterfeit, uh, they kind of have a value as a thing that you can't reproduce, mm -hmm. but, you know. It's, it's, it would be a collector's item. It would be. A, well, yeah, and so it would make a nice little exchange of value on a black market. It's why we use Confederate money in all my poker games. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, people see it the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the things about, you know, people who, especially, are, you know, that's the big thing about art, art dealers is like, yeah, I'm not going to pay 10 grand for someone who just threw paint against a white canvas and decided it's, I mean, the, the, all that value is totally subjective and it's, it's up to the buyer and the seller. Well, yeah. And so if you're like, hey, we just need some medium of exchange that you can't create and suddenly flood the market uh, and that we all agree is the thing that it is. Yeah, I mean, if, those, if that group or if that community or if that, you know, whatever, people accept all agree to, agree to those terms. All right. Well, uh, I got to go get ready for Current Geek, but thank you guys for this episode of East Meets West. Woo! Glad we saw And uh, yeah, for sure. we'll be back on Monday. Bye, everybody. <laughs>